Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. Hey friends. Oh, welcome hold up. On the channel. Hold on, I can't see you. Oh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what we're doing today, uh -huh. Declan? What are we doing? Uh, happen going to me. I'm a rabbit colony. Wee. Oh, well, close. We're not making a rabbit colony. We're making rabbit cages that are going to go next to the rabbit colony. Uh-huh. You yeah. are. We are. We're going to put in rabbit cages. Rabbit cages. Yep, next to our rabbit colony. So every time I mention building rabbit cages here on the homestead, I keep getting asked if we're getting away from colony raising our rabbits and tractor raising our rabbits. And I want to go ahead and put it out here. No, we are not. I do not have any plans to ever get out of colony raising rabbits or tractor raising rabbits. I actually have plans to expand on how many rabbit tractors we have in the future. But we are adding cages as well. So we will have rabbit colony, rabbit tractors, and rabbit cages. This will allow me to be able to show you all three ways of raising rabbits, give you the pros and cons of each through my experience, not just research. And I am looking forward to that. It will also allow when we start selling breeders in the future for me to sell breeders to you that match the way you're going to raise rabbits. So I can sell breeders who are raised in a colony. I can sell breeders who are raised in rabbit tractors, or I can sell breeders who are raised in cages. That way the rabbits are used to that style of living that they're going to go from and go to kind of helps them settle in a little bit easier and just makes life easier in general. So that's our plans. We are adding in one large rabbit cage. We're going to build it as one. It's going to have dividers in it. You'll see, just stay tuned. The roof line of the cages will also help enhance our rain water that we can gather off of our rabbit colony. The rabbit cages roof will feed into that. We are upgrading the rainwater storage system that is on our rabbit colony. It is a huge project that we are looking forward to undertaking. So we're gonna get started. I'll show you everything I've bought and what we're gonna do. So I have two of these that are 30 inches by 10 feet that gives me 20 feet total. These are 16 gauge, half inch by one inch holes. I have one of these that is 24 inches by 25 feet long and this is one inch by two inch holes and then this one is 50 feet long i think it's 36 inches wide and it is one inch by two inch holes in it this one is 14 gauge wire and then this one is 16 gauge wire and these are 16 gauge wire I have these uh, wire cage clips and the attachment. I got these on Amazon, they came together. And then for my doors, I've got, I've got spring latches to hold my doors open and closed. And these are from rabbitnipples.com. So this rabbit cage is gonna be 15 feet long and it's gonna have dividers in it to make five cages inside the one big cage. So it'll be put together as one area, but it'll have five actual cages in it. Now these cages are set up to be breeder cages, so they're going to be fairly large. They are 30 inches this way by 36 this way and 24 inches tall. I always recommend at least 24 inches in any of your rabbitry fields whether it's cages or rabbit tractors to allow the rabbit to kind of stand up and look around for giant rabbits you're probably going to need to increase that to about 36 inches but it's really good on those rabbits to be able to stand up and look around and it's really good for the muscling in their hind quarters to do that and you want to encourage muscling in your meat rabbits So the next thing I want to cut is the sides of the cages. Now these are 24 inches tall. It is again two by one inch spacing and the wire. And I realized I didn't buy enough. So the one I showed y'all was 24 inches, 25 feet long. And I only bought one of them and I should have bought two of them. I don't know why I only bought one, but you need two. Thankfully, when I bought the 36 inch wide one for the roof, I bought a really large roll of it because it was cheaper per foot to do that than to buy a shorter roll of it. So I have plenty of it left. So this is the 24 inch one. I'm going to cut this into one 15 foot section and then three, three feet sections. 
So that will give me 15, 18, 24. So I'll end up with one foot of this left over, but that's a good use of it. I am measuring out another 30 inch one and at the 30 inch mark, it's like in the middle of one of these holes. So I don't know how that's gonna work when I put it together. So I'm gonna cut it a little big and figure it out when we get there. I don't know. Now from the 36 inch wide one, I'll cut another 15 foot section like I'm doing this. And I think three, I was a three feet section. So it'll basically be the same. I'll just have to do a little extra cutting on that one. Oh, I must get the net and catch one. No, so you mama. What in this welding helmet? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm almost done, mm. guys. You're almost done? Uh-huh. You gonna come help me when you're done? No, Next, I want to take and lay out my flooring wire because the flooring is the most important part in your rabbit cages. You want it to be nice and sturdy and strong. Um, the bending and flexing of it can lead to sore hawks on your rabbits and nobody wants sore hawks. So I'm going to lay it out. It is already 30 inches wide. It is in two rolls that are 10 foot long. So I'm going to attach those two 10 foot long rolls and then cut it off at the 15 feet where it needs to be. The flooring wire is the only one that's at a half inch by one inch spacing on the wire. That is so it's big enough to let poop fall through, but not wide enough that it's putting too much pressure on different points of the rabbit's feet to cause sore hawks. We don't want that. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No. So. I've already attached this one end down here. I kind of had to play with these clippers and YouTube a video on how to use them to figure out how to do this. So I have my little wire piece right in there and I just close my pliers enough to hold it in there and not fall out. And then I stick it on my wires I want to bend together and just squeeze all together. So what I've learned through trial and error is when you put your wire in, put both of your wires over here so when it closes, this will close around it. If you put them on this side, it won't get both of them in there and it'll close on just one. All right. Those are attached. Now let's roll them out. Now let it go. Okay, so I have my side piece that I'm sitting on and my floor piece and I'm going to start on this end attaching them together with these wire clips and working my way down. And I'm trying to make it flat. Yeah, I've been trying to make it flat this whole time and I don't want to flatten out. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have this. Hold this up for me. Oh, oh. 
well, I'm back after a short break. So I got all the way to the end of my one side and realized that at one point in time, my bottom wire had a dip in it. And so they didn't quite line up like they should. And of course I didn't realize that until I had several wire clips in place. So then I have to go back and take them off. Uh, yeah. So I found an easy way to do this. I seen a quick video on YouTube on how to do this. Uh, he used a nail I'm using. I'm using this like tent stake, but anything like this. A screwdriver could probably even work if you have one of those laying around. Let me show you what I did. Take them off. Okay, so this is the one we're taking off. And I have my stake that's roughly nail sized, screwdriver size, like a skinny screwdriver. And I'm putting the sharp pointy end inside and just my J-clip pliers. And I'm going to beat the end of it to wedge that in there and lift up. And now it's spaced and it's out. Pops off. See how it's like raised up here because this part was bent down and this is raised up. And here's where the other clip is. So all this was space. So that's what I'm having to go back and fix. Okay, everything else. Hey, can you hold this up for a second? Mm-hmm. Hold it. Don't let it fall. Other side attached. Now I gotta do the dividers. Three feet. Every three feet. Six. So I'm going to go through and put one clip on the edge of each one where the measuring tape lines them up at. That way, if I mess up, I only have one clip on each one to remove. Um, and now I'm just going to stand them up and attach them down the line. Now I'm going to take and set up this back side and go through and attach all the side pieces down this side. And then I will set up this side and attach all the side pieces down this side. And then the only thing left yeah. to attach is the top. And then we got to work on a door. It's finally starting to look like rabbit cages. And not just a weird mess of wire. Time for the top. It's time for the top. It's time for the top. It's time for the top. Oh, sorry, Mama. Sorry, Mama. I'll get you. Well, how are we going to make the door? I'll have to cut the door in a minute. You'll have to cut the door? Yeah, I'll have to cut a door. Cut a little bitty door? Well, a door big enough for us to get a rabbit in and out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's the one that crazy bites you and hurt you. It's grass. Well, if any of them bite us, then they go in a stew pot and they're going to be rabbit dinner. Then we'll have to go break them. Yeah, we'll have to go break them. We don't do a rabbit's a bite. Well, some kind of one. Perhaps what are biting you make your dinner. Yep. 
Okay, so I finished attaching my roof last night. It's basically one long 15 foot rectangle with dividers in it. There are no doors in it yet, but Kenneth is getting ready to put up the stand for the cages. So we're gonna go see what that's about. So we're over here next to the rabbit colony. This is where the cages are gonna go down this side. The roof of the cages are gonna slope back so that it drains into the gutters and feeds over into the rainwater catchment. <laughs> we are going to pick up IBC totes today to swap out for those. I have ordered two 330 gallon, I think is what they are, two 330 gallon IBC totes. And then they will go back there. We're removing the black pickle barrels. Right now we have four black pickle barrels back there. They were 55 gallons a piece, which gave us about 200 and 220 gallons, I think, of water storage capacity. So one IBC tote will be more than what those four are back there. I'm getting two. So we're basically tripling our water storage. We are actually tripling our water storage for back there. Those black pickle barrels will move over to other places where we just have buckets and stuff that catch rainwater right now. And they will go there so that they can catch the rainwater off of like the RV roof and stuff like that, which will give us even more water storage right here on the homestead. Now there are four rabbits in here in the colony. They're all hiding from the sun because it's hot out today. So if you see little white rabbits running around, that's what they are. You see a wormy? <laughs> oh, look, there's some roly police. Well, there's a wormy too. Do you see that roly poly? Oh, I got a centipede in there. You got a centipede? Uh huh, it's going in there. All right, bud, we're going to have to build here, so you better rescue any bugs you're wanting to keep. What other one? I think I want to keep this one too. Declan made himself a terrarium out of uh, a big, large Tupperware container. So he's collecting bugs that were under some stuff that was here before we build the rabbit cages. He's trying to talk me into buying him a bug playground or an actual terrarium. And until then, he's built his own. That mainly has really pulleys in it, but you know. Put it, oh, see, I dropped that wormy. Let's find that wormy again. <laughs> I'm trying to scoop all these kinds of wormy. So the rabbits that are in here right now are the four from Manali's litter, the four that are withheld for becoming potential breeders. And some of them will actually be going in the cages that are going here. So it won't be far for them to move. So Kenneth's actually going to like attach the cages to the colony. I'm going to rest a lot of bugs. Sorry guys, it's gonna get loud over here for a minute. Oh, it won't it. Much yarder, mama. Well, don't get too much dirty yarder. Yeah. Is the cage gonna fit in between here and there? I just keep in there. Oh, I was saying, uh, what I was going to put in there. Okay, baby. Oh, that's tall. Oh, I gotta cut it. Oh, <laughs> it's like, geez, man. These back here are just two by four by eights screwed along the line. That gives us 16 feet. Our cages are 15 feet total. This one he just screwed on. He said it's 34 inches. And then this one is just an eight two by four by eight. He's gonna cut that one off, so don't know the height of it yet. And the cage should rest on these. It's the support beam that goes behind it. And he's doing the same on this side. Oh. Now what are you gonna do with all these bugs? Well, I want to uh, make them my home. Ah. <laughs> oh, where's it going on the inside? Oh, okay. <laughs> The floor is lava. The floor is lava? Uh-huh. Oh, man. Be careful. Good job, bud. <laughs> that was a big help. All right, we're ready to put the cage in place. He's got two two by four by eights that are connected in the center 
We're gonna set the cage on him and then he'll put a brace to support it. Let's get her. 15 feet of cage. Move, Declan. Okay. I think I left it on that dog. I think I left it on that dog. Somehow. Mm. Alright, so I am adding baby saber wire to the cage. All baby saver wire is wire that doubles up with the cage wire to make smaller openings so that kits can't crawl through. This wire spacing, this two by one is great because it is cost saving and it's strong wire to keep predators out. The problem is it is so wide that kits can crawl through it. Especially if you have your wire openings go in two inches this way and one inch up, that gives them a whole lot of space to crawl through. So you put baby saver wire up next to it. It's just another piece of wire that makes your holes smaller. Now this is half inch by one inch holes. This is the flooring wire that I use. I have extra of it, so I'm using it for the baby saver wire on the front. On the sides and the back, the baby saver wire I use was extra scrap pieces of wire from where I cut this down. With this one being half inch by one inch wire, I can basically put it however I want because it's not big enough for kids to crawl through. If you're using extra of the two inch by one inch wire, offset it so that it goes halfway in between the wires so that it makes like a square that's half inch by half inch. But with this one being as small as it is, I can put it however I want basically. All right, so day three of this build. Day two should have been the last day, but we had to leave to go pick up our IBC totes for our rainwater catchment system right there. Ignore Kenneth's old car that he's <laughs> remodeling right there. But yeah. All right, we see two goats right there. It is old. It is an old car. So the task for today is to finish getting our doors cut to get the baby saver wire put at the dividers in between the cages and to get the roof on, which Kenneth is already working on. He's having to figure out how to slant them to have the rainwater run into the gutter that we already have installed. So I made the doors for the cage 14 by 14 because we use five gallon buckets for our nest boxes and I need to be able to get a five gallon bucket in and out. Okay, so one thing I want y'all to see is when I find my 14 inch mark, it's lined up with this. I'm not cutting this one. I want to cut this one and this one and that will leave this as my corner and I totally just wrote on my arm with my permanent marker. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Done. I have doors. Well, I I have door holes. Let kids, I got my safety goggles. You got safety goggles? Let's see. Put them on. Whoa, I like them. I like them a lot. Mm. I've got my wire. It's the same wire that my siding is. It is 15 this way, 16 this way. It just fits through. For my hinges, I'm using J clips. Four of them, one on each quarter, two in the middle. That way if one comes loose, you have three to back up till you get the other one replaced. The hardest part of putting the whole door up are these springs. They work great when they're on there, it's just getting them on there. You know how you put a key on a key ring and you had to fight with the circle thing to get the key on there? You have to do that 10 times. And I messed up the first time, few thing. times. The circle thing? The key ring? The key ring, yeah, the circle thing. Uh, I have to do that 10 times to get all of these in place. I messed up the first few times and I had to redo those a few times. Um, so yeah, I'm over them now. I'm putting these on the third one up. That way that it, when it stretches, it has plenty of stretch. Yeah. Okay, both on there. So now, 
I just close it. No in, no out. Good to go. So I pull them down to unhook and it swings inwards. Then I can hook it up top and it stays wide open. So I can get in here and clean or mess with my kits or whatever and I'm not fighting with a door. It's not in my way. But when it's latched, they can't push it open. So it's 15 inches this way and 16 inches this way. So it gives me an inch of my door to be supported by an inch of my cage wall to keep them from being able to push it out. Kenneth is making progress on the roof. So he's got one 16 foot board on the back post that goes all the way across for the roof line to attach to. And then he's got these three two by fours going in the front. And so he's got one two by four by eight that it's attaching right there and then the other two by four by eight will go right here but we have to go get it and the roof will set on that the ones in the back are cut shorter than the ones in the front so it'll slope the roof headed back towards the gutter i can't give you exact sizes because it's going to depend on what kind of slope you need for yours <laughs> ours is based off of the colony we already had in place oh there we go I can't get up to that. <laughs> How tall is it? Oh. You did not miss us screwing in the roof because it's not attached. Uh, somebody bought the wrong size screws, so they weren't long enough. All of our doors are in. Our baby saver wire is on. Kenneth is going through filing down all of the sharp points, so I don't cut my arms up. But that's it. I'm doing it for you. Oh. I'm doing it for my babies. Oh, so the rabbits are more important. My babies. I got gotcha. you. See. Well, friends, I just realized that I never ended the video. Our rabbit cages are done. I have five rabbit cages. Now, just waiting on rabbits to go in them. I'm super excited about these. These allow us to expand our breeders in our rabbit tree and be able to offer more breeders to y'all in the future. I have big plans for the rabbits that are going into these, and I, of course, will be bringing you along for the journey. So, until next time, friends. Bye. We will see you later.